Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Job. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the articulation at the vertebra. Okay, it is going to be a very short video, so we'll finish this quickly. So, articulation at vertebra can be seen into two types. There is the facet joint articulation, and then there is the interbody articulation, where your body of the vertebra articulates. It's not exact the proper articulation that we see. The disc is present in between, but still we consider it as an articulation. Okay, so let's start with the facet joint. So the facet joint is also called as the zygoapophyseal joint or apophyseal articulation or also diarthrodial joint. Okay. So here there is the intra-articular accessory structures along with the facet joint articulation and these accessory structures what they do is they are involved in protecting the articular surfaces over here and these are your adipose tissue pads and also fibroadipose meniscoid. So let's look at the facet joint. So if you take this vertebra, lumbar vertebra over here, okay, I'll keep it downward like this and the second vertebra, I'll keep it on top of it. So this is where the articulation, the facet joint articulation occurs, right? So this is the first superior, so this is the superior facet and then the inferior facet of the next vertebra will articulate like this, okay? And this is how the movement occurs, the flexion extension movement. Now, if you see in lumbar region, there is more of flexion extension movement, right? Flexion extension movement is predominant. So this happens because if you see the articulating surfaces, they are in the sagittal plane, right? So that's why the flexion extension movement in the lumbar area is more. So the facet joint determine which movement is more in that particular segment of your spine, right? So that is something which is very important. The arrangement or the angulation of your facet joint which will determine the movement in that region of the spine okay so now that we have known about the facet joint which consists of superior and inferior facets of the adjacent vertebras where the articulation occurs let's move on to the next part that is the articulation at the interbody joint now interbody is the articulation that is occurring between the two bodies so this is my first body of the lumbar vertebra and second body so if I take my disc over here, the disc will be sitting between the two bodies and this is the interbody articulation that we see. Now there are different movements that occur in the interbody articulation. There is side to side translation. That means your vertebra will move from side to side. Obviously the movement is not this much. I'm just exaggerating so that you can understand the movement properly. Then there is superior inferior. That is basically distraction when you are hanging on a wall or uh, on a pole or something there will be distraction right so that would be the superior inferior translation then anterior posterior translation that would be this right anterior posterior this can occur in spondylolisthesis right that is the dislocation of the vertebra right so that is the anterior posterior exaggerated translation that i'm talking about so till now we have seen side to side superior inferior and anterior posterior then the other three are side to side rotation that would be this okay so if you see from superior view this side to side that is basically lateral flexion then next is rotation in transverse plane this is the classical rotation that we see in the spine okay so rotation of the vertebra and then finally the anterior posterior rotation that is this right tilting of the vertebra anteriorly and posteriorly that would be flexion extension right so with that we finish up the movements at the interbody joints so now what what did we see we saw the facet joint which has accessory structures like adipose tissue pads and fibroadipose meniscoid which help you in protecting the articular surfaces and then we saw interbody joint which has different movements at the interbody segments right so with that, we finish up this small topic. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, please share it with your friends. 
don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out. Also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover. And see you soon in the next video.